Hey guys, welcome to Honeycomb and today we're going to be talking about mesh filters for pour overs. Specifically, we're using the Kinto Column Coffee Dripper. You know, we've been playing with it for the last couple weeks and we wanted to show you our best recipe, what we found through experimentation with this coffee dripper and uh, maybe help you get the best results when using a dripper like this one. Now, if you guys aren't subscribed to our YouTube page yet, please do subscribe and let your friends know all about the content that you get here, but also follow along on Instagram and at KO Kosh on Instagram. You can also follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and follow at Honeycomb Manila, which is this place here, our studio in Double Dragon Plaza, Pasay City, the Philippines. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk a bit about this device. So when I unboxed it, I said it, it would be nice if there was a cover on the column coffee dripper, but it turns out you can actually just store it like this and it stores really nicely in your kitchen. And now let's talk about the different parts of the brewer. The bottom part is what they call the saucer. And if you store it upside down, it serves as a cover. And when you're not brewing, you can just leave that over on the side. And then inside you have this little stand device that's supposed to sit on top of a cup so it's a hole and the dripper goes on top right in there now you can actually see that the dripper protrudes out the bottom from the holder and so you can't just put it down randomly or else it'll pop out of the of the device but you could probably put the dripper directly on a carafe if you needed to they want us to put this right on top of a coffee cup but in order to show you the the brew process better and explain kind of the ins and outs about this brewer we decided to use a glass receptacle so that you guys can see the consistency of the coffee as we brew it and then we'll put it into a cup later to drink now of course the star of the show is this mesh filter which is a paperless brewing system it allows you to not have to buy filters instead you just use this filter over and over and take good care of it by washing it you wash it regularly i only use hot water i don't use any soap or detergent on these things as long as the only thing you're ever using it for is coffee then what you actually want is for it to stay well seasoned and have coffee oils kind of coating the mesh that's my opinion it's what i've done for the last few years it hasn't hurt me since i hope that that's a good way to do it i don't like risking the taste of detergents in my coffee devices i'll wash it maybe every once a month or as the need be if it gets dust inside then we'll definitely wash it with with detergent but if not just hot water very hot water uh, above i think it's 75 or 80 degrees should pasteurize anything that's alive in there now some of you might know mesh filters from drip coffee machines sometimes when you buy an electric coffee machine it will come with one of these so you can put in a paper filter you could pop this into the filter cone you put your coffee in and that's how you brew your coffee but the problem with most drip machines is usually the consistency of temperature so the the water is not hot enough or it gets too hot so it starts out too cold at like a 70 something degree and it goes all the way up to 100 degrees boiling throughout the brew process and that's very unstable and not a great way to make your coffee with a system like this it allows you to get a very similar mouth feel from that paperless system but using your own kettle allows you to control the temperature of the water during the brew process and being able to control the temperature that is a very big deal in brewing great coffee so our coffee that we're using today is a relatively freshly roasted coffee and this is a brazil coffee and we're actually going to put 20 grams of coffee into this brewer now this is one of the things we found is that this thing works best when it's fully loaded so it does come with this scooper over here but this scooper only scoops about 10 to 12 grams and we found this works best with about 20 grams of coffee you can see the consistency it is a french press style plunger style grind size uh, we use the breville smart grinder to, to grind this particular one we have it at its corset setting which is 60 on the breville smart grinder so I'm just gonna level that out by tapping it and I'll put it on top of the carafe there. Now you might notice in most of my brews, I usually do not put a divot in the middle of my, of my coffee bed. Usually people do that to send water towards the center and I usually want for uh, water to run around the sides of my coffee. But for this kind of brewer, because there's no resistance 
coming from the cone. Take your spoon, this is a bar spoon, and we're gonna make a little hole in the middle of the coffee. And that's where we're gonna pour our water. Almost all of our water is going to go through that little hole. And that's because, again, there's no pressure, there's no resistance coming from the cone, and we want for our coffee to be fully saturated during the brew process. Water temperature. Now you might hear the kettle hissing, that's because it's fresh off the boil. We wanna brew our coffee at 100 degrees uh, Celsius, so as high as possible. Now, why are we doing that? That is because this cone won't really retain that much temperature. All you'll have is the heat that you're adding into the coffee and maybe any exothermic um, temperature that's gonna be generated from the coffee itself. But that will just contribute to the stability of the brew but not necessarily increase the temperature. So generally speaking, we're going in at 100 degrees and we're expecting it to drop and taper off over time. All right, so I'm starting my timer and the coffee's gonna flow relatively fast. So the first time I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pouring my water into that hole and wet all of our grounds pretty evenly. Now I'm only gonna put up to 40 ml of water inside of this first blooming phase. You can see the coffee rising up and blooming. That's a good thing inside of this brewer. When we get to 30 seconds, I'm now gonna add another 100 ml. Something I like to say is to brew with your eyes. So use your eyes to see what is a level bed for this coffee. I'm just going concentric circles, spiraling in and out, just so that I can see exactly how much water is in there at one time. Now, as you can see, the coffee flows relatively fast through this thing. So that's why we're doing a bigger dose. The 20 grams of water that we put there in the beginning, to which we're gonna be adding 300 ml of water, that is actually helping us get stability inside of the brew process because the water just flows so quickly through it. So by extending the amount of coffee that we're brewing, we're extending the amount of time that we're extracting from the coffee and allowing us to also brew more coffee. So this cone, although it is intended for one cup, I found that it actually works best for two cups. So if you notice, in the beginning I was just targeting to get that first 100 ml in quickly and now I'm doing a brew with your eyes kind of concept where I'm trying to maintain the same height in my coffee bed throughout the brew process. Which means I'm trying to get it to fill it with water at the same rate as the water is dripping down into the carafe. Another reason, yeah, why we're not using a a cup here is because the 300 ml of water that we poured in through there, that is not going to fit inside most standard cups. All right, so that's 300 ml of water. It's dripping down its final drips, and I'm gonna call it at two minutes and 40 seconds. Let's give it a little tap. You can see the bed is very level, right? And that's a good sign. I usually don't pay attention to bed level. I find it to be not as important as the shape of the bed and the dynamic of the coffee flowing during the brew process. But because there's a lot less fines migration inside a mesh filter system that's open uh, like this one, we're actually expecting all of the fines to just wash down into the carafe. And so that bed shape does actually matter in this brew method. All right, so I'm going to put the whole thing back on top of this saucer and put that down there. Now that's supposedly gonna keep dripping and I guess you can just wash the whole thing. If you, have a, if you have a dishwasher, you can pop the whole thing into the dishwasher after of course emptying out your coffee grounds. That is a column coffee dripper. And you can see that the coffee is not clear at all. It's almost like an Americana style or a French press style coffee. What you're gonna expect when you see a coffee like this is that it's going to have a very heavy mouth feel and lots of body in the coffee. So I'm stirring it now right after brewing. And that's going to integrate all of the flavors from the top of the coffee or the last brewed coffee and the bottom of the coffee. It's also going to cause any fines that are in there to swirl around and kind of find each other in the middle of the vortex. And that'll actually help in sending the fines to the bottom of the carafe. Once you've done that little spin, we're gonna wait another two minutes to let all of the coffee just settle in there. 
All right, we're back. It's been two minutes since we stirred our coffee. So it took about two and a half minutes to brew. After about 30 seconds, we gave it a stir with the, another two minutes. So now it's about five minutes since our brew time. And let's see how much coffee we got. So that settled quite a bit. You can see it's still quite a bit um, cloudy and we'll see how that comes out. I'm gonna put it into these two cups. As I said, this was two cups of coffee. Now, when you pour these, you should pour it very slowly and not over tilt your carafe because you want any fines to continue sinking down into the carafe and not go into your cup. And I'm gonna stop just as I see any sediment forming here on the bottom of the carafe. So you can see here in the camera that we left a little bit of coffee inside the carafe and that's all of the parts that has all of the fines, all of the little bits that got through the filter, but it's actually not that much. Now, if you watched our hacking metal filters video, what we said was that you tap the filter and that allows for, for fines to come out. We tried that with this filter and it doesn't work. The fines don't come out unless they are pulled out with water. So that didn't work here, but it did a much better job at retaining fines versus the metal filter. Total output of coffee, was 256 so it absorbed about two times its weight in in water so 20 grams of coffee will absorb about 40 grams of water give it a taste smells smells good it's sweet it shouldn't be bitter at all it's still very very hot even though our entire brew process including the rest period was five to six minutes what I like about this is that unlike a French press, which is very, very full bodied or like the metal filter that was very full bodied, this still has a lot of clarity and it's not too thick. Like you can still drink this and you won't feel like you're drinking an Americano or you're drinking, you know, something that has a lot of oils in it, um, which actually surprised me quite a bit that not that much oils or not that many oils made it out into this cup and you still have a relatively clear cup despite the fact that you didn't use a paper filter. So who's this for? So this is for someone A, who wants another toy, or B, this we are really starting to see this, um, this theme emerge with Kinto's newer products, where they're really trying to push systems that don't use any filters. This really is for kind of this hybrid style. So it has a lot of the, of the body of a French press, but it does have um, a lot of the tanginess and acidity and balance that you get from the percolation method, which is water moving through the, the coffee instead of just sitting in it. It also allows you to make more efficient brews instead of doing a French press ratio, which usually you get a lot less coffee out of it. Um, this one allows you to do something like a one is to 15, even a one is to 18 ratio and get a pretty good cup of coffee. Remember one, Make sure that your basket is fully loaded and you're doing about 20 grams more or less of coffee in there. And two, do a one is to 15 ratio. It's kind of the sweet spot for this brewer. After experimenting, I think we went all the way down to uh, 10 is to one and all the way up to 19 to one. And 15 still was the sweet spot right in the middle, as long as your coffee was ground coarsely enough. Have you brewed with mesh filters like this? Um, there are some new mesh filters coming out. Are you excited for any of those? Do let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Leave them in the comments below or ask on Instagram. I'm at Kosh on Instagram. You can also follow at Daily Drink Mag on Instagram and follow at Honeycomb Manila, this place, our studio, where we make all this content. There's lots of content, so watch another video and subscribe to the channel. All right, I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys great coffee. Peace.